ankle and foot pain in the game of golf are not the most common injuries that you'll see, but they do impact a fair amount of golfers out there. That's why I want to take some time today to really address these issues, explain the mechanics behind what's happening, and then also take you through some swing demonstration to show you some particular places in your swing where you can uh, abnormally stress your ankles and your feet uh, to potentially cause injury. So starting out today, let's talk about the actual anatomy of what we're dealing with. So as you know, I'm not the greatest of artists, but we're gonna call this your foot. Uh, if we call this your shin bone out front, coming down in here would be uh, basically what's called your tibia, coming into the outside ankle bone. Um, you obviously, you're gonna have your calf kind of coming down here and through the Achilles tendon. You have your uh, heel bone or your calcaneus right there. On the base of your foot, you'll have all of your plantar fascia and all those muscles that kind of flex your toes. Um, and are very active, obviously, in balance, standing, uh, and walking. If any of you, if you have ever had plantar fasciitis, that's typically where you'll feel some of that pain. Uh, those muscles are very much involved. Um, it connects up through the um, back of the calcaneus and then into the Achilles, so there's oftentimes calf and Achilles issues or involvement uh, with plantar fasciitis as well, too. The other two big groups that I'd like to talk about are gonna be there's muscles that come down right along the back of that uh, tibia, back or sorry, back of the fibula, and come underneath the ankle bone. But on the outside, you also have some that come do the same on the inside. Uh, on the inside, the big, biggest muscle is called the tibialis posterior. On the outside, those muscles are called the peroneals. They basically help to keep mo moving your ankle back and forth, side to side. Um, they have some uh, effects with pulling your toes up and pushing your, your foot ankle down. Um, and then you also are going to have on the bottom one of the important muscles that you hear a lot about a lot of the times is the flexor hallucis longus that comes from the base of your big toe um, really helps to push up during walking uh, very often involved with foot and, and ankle issues um, so that's just kind of a quick brief overview um, of the ankle and the foot uh, the other one that most people will see a lot of times is this muscle coming up in the front that helps to you can see it kind of pop up out of your ankle when you pull your foot up and that's the um, the, basically what its job is to pull the, the toe up, that's called your tibialis anterior. Um, so that kind of gives you some basic general anatomy of the back, the front, and then the two sides. Um, if you take a look at the anatomy image um, that's on the screen right now, you can kind of get a sense of uh, just geographically in your foot where those different uh, muscles are oriented. So again, as you're looking at that image, the tibialis anterior, will help to pull your foot up as you're walking. The peroneals on the outside will help to pull your foot out to the side and also pull your toes up. They assist that tibialis anterior. Uh, then you have your, on the inside, your tibialis posterior, which will actually pull your foot in as well as point the toes down. Um, and that will some, oftentimes assist with the calf, um, the gastroc and the, uh, or the gastrocnemius and the soleus. And then obviously you have on the bottom of your foot all of your plantar fascia and uh, what, you know, the flexor hallucis longus is one of the more important muscles there as we're talking about injury. So that gives you a brief general anatomy overview of the foot and what we're dealing with uh, in that foot ankle complex. Uh, where do people mostly see injuries in the game of golf? In my experience, uh, we will deal with some ankle pain, uh, mostly on the outside. Uh, well, oftentimes uh, Achilles issues in through here are not uncommon. Uh, and then we'll also deal with uh, plantar fasciitis. So those are the kind of the three areas that we'll talk about today that are the more common ones that we've seen. Again, the plantar fasciitis, some lateral ankle pain, and then some uh, back of the calf and the gastroc uh, or the Achilles tendon issues. Um, so as we go into the swing and we're talking, I'll make sure I address all these three. Generally, uh, the Achilles is gonna be uh, self-treatable if we're doing some myofascial work. Uh, the Achilles and the plantar fascia have similar uh, initial exercises in terms of getting the tissue healthy again. If you've watched any of our other videos, we talk a lot about restoring tissue elasticity, uh, getting the tissue healthy again so they can actually absorb, and uh, absorb the benefit of good exercise. Um, just throwing exercises at these injuries uh, without actually treating the tissue is gonna be a, a big fat waste of your time. Uh, the other one will be lateral ankle, um, and that oftentimes, I'll be sure to point this out in the swing fall, it's gonna be related to the peroneals being overly stressed uh, due to a swaying or sliding. Uh, they get just overworked, they can tend to get a bit scarred up. 
not glide as well as they should. You do have a nerve that comes in through there. Sometimes that can get entrapped or impinged and cause some other issues as well too. Um, but so we'll, as we, uh, let's go head over to the swing area now and we'll talk about uh, pointing out a couple of different places in the golf swing where these injuries can manifest. So with the golf swing, the one of those injuries that we talked about earlier that will have the biggest potential uh, causation coming from a swing change or a um, or just poor mechanics will generally be the outside of the trail ankle or the outside of the lead ankle. Um, I actually had a case uh, where an, a, uh, a senior golfer was trying to really increase their turn. They did not have the uh, trunk rotation or the hip rotation to do so, uh, but the instructor they were working with was really trying to get him to turn his shoulders. So in order to do that, he had to really, as he came back, if you can see my foot here, he had to really shift to the outside of that leg to try to get back behind the ball because he couldn't do so with pure rotation. Uh, he did that actually enough so that he actually tore some of those tendons there um, and that obviously required surgery to repair um, and has left him, uh, you know, he's okay now, but that left him with a, a number of painful months of trying to figure out what was going on. So when you're taking the club back, remember obviously you want to be able to turn into your body. If you don't have that rotation above, so if you've seen the home assessment video, we talk about really rotating the into the hip and into the trunk, having good shoulder rotation, neck rotation. If you don't have all of that, you're going to be more apt to sway back into the into your through your backswing. When that happens, that's going to put a lot of stress along the outside of this lower leg, which can potentially use to overuse issues there. The flip side is going to be true if I come down and I really go hard into that left leg, there could be a, there's going to be a lot of additional stress on the outside of that ankle as well. Um, probably the bigger issue on the lead ankle is going to be if you're wearing, particularly if you're wearing, uh, you know, metal spikes or, or shoes that really grab into the ground. If there's lack of hip, trunk, neck, arm mobility coming through, um, if you, if uh, here I'm just wearing sneakers, so if I came through and I didn't have that ability, my foot would just spin. But if that foot is planted and I get a lot of torque through there that isn't going to be able to be uh, absorbed by my hip, my knee and my ankle are going to be at a very high and increased risk of being injured in terms of being overly torqued. So that can cause some issues uh, laterally as well as up and through the front if you remember uh, some of the muscles we talked about in there, the tibialis anterior, <clears throat> and just you know becoming very irritated that way. So from a swing standpoint, the biggest issues will tend to come in the ankle and the foot from a lot of la excessive lateral movement, and it'll, you'll have an increased risk of ankle issue and foot issues when that lateral movement is in the presence of a lack of rotary movement up above in the hips, the spine, the shoulders, and the neck. So hopefully this helps to give you a little bit of insight from a swinging standpoint, how coming too far laterally or coming too far through the golf ball on your follow through can be negatively impactful into the ankles if you have lack of rotation uh, up higher in the chain. So what I'd like to go through now is how to actually address some of the soft tissue problems that you'll see on the plantar surface or the bottom of your foot, on the back of the calf, and then also on the two sides of the leg. So we're gonna get up close, uh, we'll get the camera angle up pretty close here so you can see what we're doing. All you're gonna need would be a, either a lacrosse ball or potentially even a golf ball. We'll, so we'll show you how to use both and where the either would, or each would be appropriate. So for the plantar fascia, you can take the uh, lacrosse ball, you're gonna start with it underneath your, uh, kind of right in front of your heel, and you can kind of roll it up and down till you find a spot that's uncomfortable. You can lean into the top of it of your knee to increase stress uh, and then you're going to work to as you can see my toes kind of coming up and down I'm going to try to find a spot that's uncomfortable and then try to strip that fascia and pull those muscles out from underneath that restriction so um, you can kind of start it towards the back coming to where it's uncomfortable trying to move it up and down and then you can slowly kind of rolling it out more and more uh, towards the toes um, you can also start at the other end and start and coming in, rolling up that way. That would be the more of the traditional way to do it. Either way, we have found works pretty well. You can see I'm starting to get more and more motion in my toes as my fascia opens up. <clears throat> so that's one way to go about it. The other option would be to take a golf ball size uh, tool and you could get in there as well. That's going to get in there a little bit 
more pinpoint, a smaller surface area. So that'll really get into separating some of those muscles um, instead of just a broad based pressure and opening up. So that would be the, the one way to get around the um, plantar fascia. Uh, for the next one, we'll go down into how to get into the calf and the lateral and medial components of the peroneals and the tibialis posterior. So for the calf, um, if you can see, if I'm going to make a calf muscle, this is going to be the gastroc here, and then your peroneals are going to come down the side, coming right underneath the ankle bone there. Um, on the front, you can kind of see the tibialis anterior coming up and through here, um, and then the tibialis posterior is going to be more along the back side. So to get the gastroc, you have two heads of the calf. You have an inside and an outside head. I'm going to put the ball onto the top of that position. I'm going to find the spot that's uncomfortable and then I'm going to move my ankle up and down much in the same way that I moved my toes up and down on the plantar fascia. Uh, now I can search the entire leg up and down. I can roll to the inside looking to find areas that are more uncomfortable on that medial aspect and now those two heads come all the way down into the Achilles tendon and you can come down this part here is about where the, what's called the muscle tendon junction occurs. That's where the muscle transitions into tendon. There'll be a difference in elasticity in terms of the properties of those two areas. This oftentimes is where a lot of Achilles type injuries will occur, um, you know, particularly the partial tears. So you can kind of pull up and down. I feel like I got a little sore spot there. Um, this will particularly be sore if you walk a lot, um, more so than you're typically used to. Um, and then from there, you can get over into the peroneals, which would just be a matter of turning your leg to the side and you're rolling up and down, find some spots that are a little uncomfortable. And again, moving the ankle up and down. And you can also bring your ankle side to side. Um, and that goes all the way up, <clears throat> if you can see here, to the head of the uh, fibula, which is this muscle out through here. This is where a lot of those muscles come up and attach through. Um, and then for the posterior tibialis, that's a much deeper muscle. Um, but you can certainly get the ball there and trying to I'll swing around this way. And you can see kind of I can get down into that area there. Again, moving it up and down uh, that way. So the posterior tibialis is definitely a much uh, more difficult area to get into just because of its depth within the lower leg. Um, but it's certainly worth giving it a shot on your own. And you know, remember that if, if you aren't able to uh, address the discomfort in these two areas, or these three or four areas on your own in you know, one to two weeks, then you really should be uh, seeking out the, assess the help of a medical professional uh, to, to help to really remedy these if these truly are uh, you know, more serious injuries. So hopefully going over a couple of those swing uh, issues that we saw that can impact how our ankle and foot feel give you some insight in terms of potential swing faults and how they affect your foot. Um, the other important one to think about is your footwear uh, and what sort of foot do you have? Do you have a flat foot? Do you have a foot with a good arch? Uh, do you, you know, have a functionally flat foot, which means when you stand up, it's kind of flat, but you're able to engage the arch when you're moving and walking. This should impact the type of footwear that you, that you are wearing. We will actually gonna, we're actually gonna put together a whole other video on this, so be sure to check for that. Uh, in terms of how to select the correct footwear for your foot. Um, that takes, that's, we're going to devote an entirely other video to that. Um, but that's where walking in the wrong footwear, or if you haven't walked at all, you go on a golf trip and you walk for five days straight, um, a lot of times we'll see some issues in that plantar fascia or in through that Achilles just because of the increased in load capacity that you've required from your leg and your foot. So hopefully you found this helpful. Uh, take the understanding of how those issues can come up in your golf swing. Try to address those issues from a technical standpoint to decrease your chances of foot and ankle pain from a, a swing technicality fault. And also hopefully those fixes that we went over in terms of how to roll out those different areas uh, start to help to get you on the mend to feeling better. Uh, and remember, as always, if you've been doing it for a week to two weeks on your own, it is not better really please seek out your nearest medical professional to address any of those injuries. This video is not meant to be a substitute for medical care. So hopefully you found this helpful. I look forward to hearing how you're swinging faster, playing better, and hurting less.